Education. America's school system has been stuck inside the same structure, but that world has begun to change. By embracing the best ideas from a myriad of disciplines, we are transforming the shape of education. Welcome to Mash Ed Up. Reimagine education. Hi everyone. It is really fun to be here today because already this is shaping up to be one of the most fun education conferences I've ever been to. Because you probably all have experienced this, education conferences are not usually this fun. So thank you guys for um, putting this on and for the invitation to be here. I love this topic that we have today, reimagining education. And I thought what I'd share is some of my experiences uh, some of my experiences that put me on the path toward reimagining education. So I started out as a graphic designer, which um, maybe you could tell from my intro. Um, and uh, how many designers do we have in the room? San Francisco, probably a very big yeah, set of designers. Designers can come in all forms, product design, interaction design. I started out in graphic design. And I believed that design was the way that we could change the world. Design creates amazing solutions that help us create meaning in our life. And I was um, so strong in my belief that design was important that I taught design for many years to both uh, fifth graders and to college students. And then I had an experience that really changed my trajectory. So I thought I would start by sharing that with you today. I, the clicker, thank you. Um, oh, it all to this. My trajectory of uh, reimagining education has to do a lot with George Bush, not because of No Child Left Behind, although that may be part of it, but because in 2002, Bush declared war. Do you remember this? Yeah. Now it kind of seems like a daily experience, but back then it felt pretty big to me uh, that we were at war. And I was teaching at Washington University in St. Louis at the time, and I was teaching typography. And we were looking at type, we were looking at the space between letters, we were looking at letter forms, uh, we were looking at all of these detailed things, and yet we were at war. Um, one of the other professors was complaining to me about how the students were apathetic, that in his day they would be out protesting on campus, that they would be objecting to the fact that we were at war, but these students weren't really doing that, and I thought, it's not because of what he was saying. He was calling them lazy and self-centered. I thought there was something else going on. So the next morning, we had um, class. And these first year students came in, and they put their images of type on the wall. And we went from looking at images, like the last slide, of war, to looking at images like this, which were type. And I thought, you know, hold on. We're at war. Let's talk about it. And the student said to me, you know, can we, can we just go on with our day? Can we just do what we were supposed to do? And I said, no, not with that answer. We're definitely sitting down and we're definitely talking about it. So we spent a great three hours chatting through what it meant to be at war. And one of the things that I realized was it wasn't that these students were apathetic or self-centered or lazy. It was that they were overwhelmed. I knew how they felt. I was kind of overwhelmed too. I didn't really know what to do with the fact that we were at war. I knew that there was something important to be considering, but I didn't really know what to do about it. And in their case, what they felt was it was so big, they had so much information, they didn't want people dying, they didn't want to be at war, but they didn't know what to do about it. So, um, this conversation helped me realize something really important in my own life, that design was the tool that I had to help me with this feeling of overwhelm. That what designers do in their work is they take all of this complex information, they take client constraints, they take challenges of the world, they take what people want, what people care about, and they combine all of this into new meaning. Whether you're creating a logo, or a product, or an interior space, 
what it, the job of a designer is, is to create new meaning. And so I started to understand that while these students were learning to become designers, they weren't yet thinking like designers, which is what I saw that design was really about. So I started to break this down for myself. We have design, the object, design process, which is the activity, of course, of getting to that design, design craft, which are the skills that get you there, like graphic design, interior design, and then also something I started calling design thinking, which I see is really about the mindset behind design. And this was that mindset that I was starting to understand was the piece that was missing. These students had all of these other levels. They were exploring all these other levels. They were doing design. They were going through this process. They were developing their skills. But they weren't yet seeing themselves as the core of what I was talking about, about those skills of being able to shape the world. So I started asking this question. What if we built a generation of design thinkers? And this was a really important moment for me personally because what I understood my trajectory to be that, that far, at that point was that it was really about teaching design the craft. And in this moment of realizing that these students felt powerless to do anything about what was happening in the world, with all the information that was coming to them, with all of the things that they knew and hear about, they did not know how to reconcile it. And because design was a way that we can both navigate all of the complexity of this world and see ourselves in it, by creating for it. Well, this is the thing that I realized we needed to learn. And this is clearly not being taught in our K-12 system. I was working with a group of undergrads who had an amazing educational experience and had done extremely well in their years. But they were performing against a system that had different expectations of them, and they were not yet prepared for the world of today. So this is what put me on this new path. Um, and I thought now I'd share with you some of the things that I've been thinking about since, some of the things that I'm still wrestling with, and some of the things that I'm exploring. So um, I, I'm at IDEO these days. I spent a few years uh, studying education, um, understanding what is going on in our education system, making sure I have integrity with the things that I feel like I want to put out there. Um, and I've been working at IDEO, where we, we are a company, actually, of design thinkers. So IDEO is an innovation and design consultancy. We um, have eight offices around the world. Um, headquarters are here, which is why a lot of you might know of IDEO. Um, and we're working on really complex challenges these days, things like creating a needleless vaccination system, or working with the CDC to look at questions of reducing childhood obesity, or even how we can get clean water to remote areas in India and East Africa. And we're also now looking at education. A lot of our work is becoming about questions of how do we redesign this complex system that we have created. One of the um, engagements that we did a few years ago was with uh, an organization called the Henry Ford Learning Institute. And I want to tell you about Andrew. Andrew is a student at the Henry Ford Learning Institute School. And he took the intro to design thinking class. Now we, um, we uh, in partnership with the design school at Stanford, helped them develop the, the full curriculum for the school and also an intro class where these kids were being exposed to design thinking. They're learning through doing projects. The first project in this class is to redesign a name tag for someone else. Now, to be honest, when we were designing that out, I had all these issues with that. I was like, design can address the world's greatest challenges. Why are we having them redesign a name tag? But okay, that's where we ended up. So I interviewed Andrew after he took this class to find out what he was thinking since, and I asked him, Andrew, what was your favorite project? And wouldn't you know it, he says to me, that name tag project. And I said, great, okay, you loved the name tag project, tell me why. And he said, in that project I learned that I was a leader. I learned that I could listen to other people's needs, and I could create something for them, and I could make them happy. I didn't know that about myself before. And I thought, awesome. You got that out of a name tag? I'm going to rethink the way I thought about that project. That's brilliant. So I said to Andrew, now that you've redesigned a name tag for someone else, congrats. I'm glad they were happy. Uh, what else would you like to redesign? 
And so he looks up, he looks to one side, looks to the other side, and he says to me, the state economy of Michigan could really use some help. And then he kind of pauses and he goes, and the school cafeteria. I'd like to redesign the school cafeteria. Now, of course, I love this story because what Andrew has shown me is that he could go from redesigning a name tag for someone else to thinking he could apply those same exact skills to the state economy of Michigan. And then, of course, back to something that he loves and is in his life, the school cafeteria. Wouldn't it be amazing if every kid in America was thinking this way? So I've been now unpacking the um, idea of design thinking, because I think Andrew represented that really well. Design thinking, what I've noticed, uh, design thinkers tend to have an orientation toward the future. They tend to have an orientation toward impact. They tend to have a comfort with change. And I've started building this out. They have certain skills like optimism and imagination and adaptability. There are things that they tend to do like feel an extreme comfort with risk and a willingness to try and um, know how to prototype and have conversations with others. And the more I started designing this out, the more I realized I was actually overwhelming myself with my own thoughts about what design thinking was. So I've simplified this now. There are three things that I see that this mindset of design thinking is really about. The first is being aware of the world around you. A design thinking orientation is really about saying, I can see what's happening around me. But not just that, I also know that I have a role in shaping that world. And the third dimension of this is really believing, of course, that you can take action toward a more desirable future. So these three dimensions of design thinking is really about being aware of the world around you, believing you have a role in shaping that world, and choosing to take action toward a more desirable future. Like this. See, what I've noticed now you know, when I, back when I was teaching at WashU, I had all this seriousness around this idea. There was this huge thing that we had to develop, actually, that was missing in all of us. And now what I've realized, as I've been working in this space for now a few years, is actually we all have it in us already. Design thinkers every day. So someone right here, they were aware of the conditions. Tea will fall in. I don't want that to happen. I believe I can make this difference. And they chose to take action toward, obviously, a much more desirable future. And so, design thinking is the way, sorry, design thinking is the way that we approach the world when we imagine and create new solutions for the future. It's a belief that new, better things are possible and that you and I can make it happen. And this, while it's a huge concept, is actually a very simple idea because we're all human. We do this all the time. At its core, I think it's about asking this question, what if? And then, of course, choosing to do something about it. We took this uh, concept to India a few years ago, working with Riverside School there, um, in order to create a design contest for school kids. Uh, we said, let's take a very simple process and let's show kids that they can make a difference in the world around them. And we'll do it in a context that actually creativity and um, confidence are not often part, a core part of the system. Actually, we took a prototype of this process out to some schools to make sure that kids and teachers could understand it. And uh, I had a principal at a school tell me, oh, these kids can't do this. They don't have brains. And I thought, God, am I going to have to spend the rest of my life proving this guy wrong? Because these kids do have brains. In fact, with one week we gave them in this contest, we had over 1,300 teams across India submit uh, entries of the changes that they made in the world around them. And they unprompted, we gave them no um, information about what they should create. They addressed challenges of illiteracy, of education, of traffic, of pollution. Like this group. Who, decide, who realized that when looking around in their community, about 90% of the parents in their school were alcoholics, 90% of the fathers in their school were alcoholics, and that these kids saw their mothers being very badly treated because of this, and they decided to do something about it. They created a support group for the mothers. They conducted a play in the center of the village that showed the problems of alcohol, 
and they got 36 men to sign up for an, a three-month alcohol treatment program that these kids designed. And they're 13, and they did this in a week. Mm -hmm. Now, India has the six of the world's children and a lot of social problems. What if every kid in that country was actually thinking this way? In fact, what if every kid in the world was thinking this way? What would be happening in our world if every kid saw that they could be an agent of change? We actually have taken that contest to now 22 countries. So kids across the world are starting to work on this. So um, I want to come back to that story I shared in the beginning. And I, I like to think of it as how George Bush changed my life. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm downing design craft. I actually think we need more official designers than ever. We need, we need the skills of graphic design and product design and service design and systems design. We need all of these skills. But in a world where we're constantly aware of epic challenges and we're confronted with really painful images in the news every day, where communication and access to information is accelerating so fast. I love that image. We actually also need tools to help us get through how overwhelming all of this can be. We don't just need craft, we actually need that mindset because that mindset is what can help us cross this feeling of overwhelm off that list. So I mentioned um, at, uh, that I'm working at IDEO, and at IDEO we're actually working with all different types of organizations to help bring design thinking uh, into their organization. We've been working with business people, we've been working with nurses, we've worked with social entrepreneurs and created tools for them. We've also worked uh, with government now, we're helping them think about how they can be innovators. And now we're shifting our attention to teachers. I am especially, because while I've been doing this work that's really about kids, I'm realizing that actually it's also teachers that need this. Not because they're not already designers. You see, I believe teachers are already designers. They design learning environments every single day. But because of that whole sort of oppression of the system where there's so much going on, the standards and the measures and all of the pressure points of the system come right back down to the teacher. And it's really hard to remember that you are bigger than the system. It is really hard to not feel victim to how much everything is telling you how to be. And so what we're creating now are some tools for teachers to help them remember to rekindle that inner designer and to actually not teach design, but see themselves as designers, act like a designer in their work so that they can be more intentionable, 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 is that the word, is that the word? Intentional, why do I want to be in there? They can be more intentional about the experiences that they're designing. So teachers in the room, designthinkingforeducators.com. Be available in a few weeks. So um, you may be thinking, interesting Sandy, I feel overwhelmed every day. What am I supposed to do? I'm not a teacher, that toolkit's not for me. What am I gonna do? And so my advice to you is design your way through it. Remember that you can be aware of the world around you. You can believe that you have a role in shaping that world. And you can choose to take action toward a more desirable future. Because, of course, you are a design thinker. Thank you.